Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back seeing what me and Chris are up to today. So in today's video, I am bringing you a trash to treasure, a thrift store flip. So in my stash of out thrifting, I love to pick up trays. And also when I'm looking at trays, I come across lap trays, you know, the ones that have the legs. Now, I have done lap trays in the past and they've been a very slow seller for me. So you just never know what somebody's looking for. So I still had some in a grouping that I'm like, you know what, I need to re-envision these. If people aren't interested in lap trays in my area, I need to figure out how to make them cost efficient to resell. So in today's video, I am going kind of an industrial vibe on these lap trays, taking the legs off of them to make them just nice size trays. So I hope that you enjoy this kind of content. And yes, these are a little bit different than you're used to from the ginger chick. Okay, so here they are. Yes, the lap trays tend to be a good size tray. I definitely fell in love with these when I saw them in the thrift store. Um, but unfortunately, yes, lap trays are slow sellers for me. But I thought, okay, let's let's reinvent these. Let's change them up. Let's see if we can take the legs off and just make them so that they are a big tray. Now, as you see, only two of them are actually lap trays, and including this one that is a large metal tray. But when I brought, bought that in the thrift store, there was no peeling whatsoever on this paint. And for some reason, over time of sitting in our yeah, our workshop, look at that hot mess. I'm like, oh, this is not going to be fun to salvage this. Let's dive right into taking these legs off. Now, I'm not going to say that it's always the easiest. And it's funny because once you actually get into doing, taking the legs off of these, both of my trays have been somewhat fixed by somebody that they were a loose bolt, a, yeah, a lot of times, yes, they, you can't tell from the outside, but the inside, there's usually some type of screw some type of a flathead, a nut, something like that. Uh, and yes, it does take a little bit of work to get them off because they are a nice tight fit. It's a little bit of a corner that's hard to fit a type of a drill in. But yes, yep, with a little bit of work, I was able to get the legs off. Now this tray, I knew that it had this issue when I picked it up from the thrift store, but look at that detail. I just absolutely loved it, so I could not help myself. Though this is MDF board, that pressed board, that I can't match it and bring it back up very well. So my idea was just to take the sander and match the other three's, three sides to it by rounding off that sharp tip. And unfortunately, it does have some raised area where it has some water damage. But see, look at all that beautiful detail, not only on the top, but around those edges. So to even out the prosody where I opened up that MDF board where the paint will just get absorbed in and it'll lay on the other, I'm going to do a few coats of the shellac spray, letting it dry in between. This is going to even out their prosody and even out the paint job at the end. I had them flipped upside down, any stickers, any tags I already took off, and now I need to get them nice and cleaned because I need to put a little bit of spackle in where those holes were, that, where the screws were. So just a little bit of the wood filler and then set it off to the side to let it dry. So this is a nice size tray with handles and all, but somebody has done a harvest theme painting on it and some acrylic paints and it's raised so I need to sand it smooth and I definitely want to concentrate on the areas that are in the red because a lot of times sometimes that red likes to bleed through things. After blowing it out with the air compressor I'm going to go ahead and get it cleaned off with some super clean. Each one of these are going to get wiped down. You Even though you sand them you need to get that prep surface and nice and clean. Get any buildup, any residue, anything that would prevent your paint from sticking off of these pieces. And then on this one, I removed some felt tabbies that somebody had put on the bottom of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove any of the handles to paint them separately. Okay, before getting out the electric sander on this one that sometimes makes metal a hot mess, that I'm going to go ahead with just my scraping tool and see what I can get that I have no idea. Really, guys, when I bought it, this was not chipped at all. 
Though I'm not going to necessarily get all the paint out of this, I just want to make sure that there's no loose paint, that it's a little bit more on the smoother side. Maybe someday I'll invest in a sandblasting tool that would probably get most of this paint off a little bit better than a sander on a metal item. So I'm going to be using my True Coat 360 handheld sprayer for this and some black onyx paint right off the shelf from walmart they're ready to use so what i'm doing here is i'm just show, sharing with you how i mix it i know everybody tells you that you need to add water yes the, for the sprayer to work properly the water need the paint needs to be watered down slightly so all i do is uh, via the tips of annie sloan <laughs> that i just keep mixing a little bit of water into my paint keep stirring it in and when I lift up the paint stirrer itself if the paint is not pooling on top of the other paint and just being mixed right in I know that it is ready that way I have no problem spraying For this metal tray, I do not think that that black onyx ready to use is the right choice So to spray this. So I'm using the Rust-Oleum in flat black, the paint and primer in one, the spray can to cover up this metal tray. After my paint is not shiny anymore, I know that it is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and get these sealed in. On my wooden items, I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum clear coat to spray and seal these in and yep these are staying black so this is its final coat and then i'll get them flipped over and proceed after that clear coat is dry to paint the other side that i did not get painted in that first coat i always like to start off upside down if i remember to do that anyway Brings me to the metal tray that I started with the inside first for some reason, but to seal the metal tray in, I'm using the polycrylic for its top coat. For some reason, that Rust-Oleum clear coat, when it comes to metals, I've been having some puckering, some crinkling on the paint, so I, it has now caused some trust issues. So for my metals, I'll be using the polycrylic. Now, many of my regular subscribe viewers have been watching me use this paper on furniture items oh my gosh yes i am just obsessed from dressers to side tables to little stools oh my gosh this has been selling really well for us so since these trays were so large i thought yes let's order some more from etsy and make an industrial look on these trays so i just kind of pressed my finger onto the paper onto the edges where i needed to get this cut that fingernail kind of made a little bit of a mark that i can see so that's where i'm cutting it off at and i'll go ahead and do the exact same thing trying to center as much as the wordage the lettering that i can i know i won't get that whole trolley in there but i'll get the general part of it so yep i'm just going to press it in try to eyeball that it's centered run my fingernail crease that little side there so i know where i can cut My vision for these is to make it look like these were made out of old shipping crates, old boxes, and whatnot. But I know that my my cut is not a straight cut, and I don't want it to look like there's just a paper glued down on the bottom of these trays. So what I like to do is just to take my little mouse Black & Decker sander and just kind of distress the, those edges. That way I don't have that crisp, heavy, sharp line. It flattens out a little bit. It tears it just a little bit, just gives it a little bit of distressing. To glue this down, I'm just going to be using some of the polycrylic. So yep, just a brush, a light coat, and I'm just going to go ahead and put it all over the bottom of this tray. <music> 
And then, of course, I, I'm hoping that I'm going to center it right from the beginning. Now, I do notice, even though I cut this paper to fit, once the paper has been wet with that glue substance, it does stretch just a tiny bit. So just to share that with you if you're trying it, this at home. And yeah, this one I tried to do all at the same time, but yeah, probably half at a time is a little bit, little bit better as I go on, but I gave it a try. So, and it doesn't, that polycrylic does not come through this, so my hand is perfectly fine to work out any of the wrinkles. Now set this one off to the side and I'll work on my next one. Now this is a little bit different of a paper because it is more of a fabric, but I have had this on my stash. I bought it for another project that I only needed one of the pieces of, but I definitely thought this French wording went with this beautiful detail on this. Same thing here, I'm going to pick out which one of these patterns I like the best. I like the swirly. Nope, I don't speak French. I have no idea what it is, it is saying. So, but anyway, so yep, I'm going to go ahead and mark my little lines just using my fingernail as a guide along the edges of this, doing the long side first. I'll go ahead and get that piece cut off and no worries I do not throw any of this extra I save it because there's always a smaller project that I could use it on now that I have that I can get a little bit better of a guide of where I need to cut it off on this other side So I wanted to distress these sharp edges also. Now I did a little stool with a rooster piece that was more fabric, but this one even seems to be more fabric-like. So yeah, it was kind of like bringing shreds of the material up, but I'd already started, so I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> keep going at it. So putting paper on the bottom of this tray is perfect because look at it is it was a little bit of a hot mess but those details were so beautiful I just really wanted to be able to save this tray and yep there's a reason that these sat around in the shop for a while why I was finally thinking hey I can put these papers and I can hide all that so unlike the hmm, the paper one this the polycrylic came all the way through so I needed to go grab a ziploc so that I my hands were in a sticky mess and I could help lay this down there's really no worries about this one wrinkling but as me trying to get any air bubbles out and then where the paper has been folded trying to make sure that it's adhered there since the polycrylic came through anyway, I thought I'm just going to go ahead and put another layer of polycrylic, just making sure that I'm being able to press down any of those areas that are a little bit discolored. Doesn't mean necessarily that they're not glued down. I just want to make sure that since it's all, all the way through anyway, just to get another coat on here and make sure that it's adhered properly. So when you search on Etsy for these papers, oh my gosh, there's just so many to choose from. But I guess I am a little bit more on the industrial, that old crate look when I'm picking these out. If it's not having to do with maybe a farm animal, uh, yet my heart goes right to these type of pieces. So for me, these have been selling and they are they do have florals and other different types when you're searching florals, eh, sometimes have not really sold too well for me in the transfer line. So, yep, but in yeah, so I'm just picking out here which what I think is a good pattern to go on the inside of this one. So I just want to share with you, go to Etsy. There's so many different um, businesses that sell. What I usually do is I go and search what I like and then I put them all in my cart and then while I'm looking in my cart a lot of times you'll get some free shipping and then I'll go over to that one storefront and see if they have all the paper that I have put into my cart um, and separate it and pick out just from one supplier. I would like to do each one I had picked out and I came through but then I'd have to pay shipping for each one. So the papers range from $5 to $8 is what I have um, been paying for these. 
Same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and distress those edges that I cut so that it's a thinner on the edge and that I, yeah, my cut's never as perfect as the manufacturer's cut. And then when I go to glue this one down, yep, I'm not gonna go ahead and try to glue it all at the same time so I'm not lifting it back up. I'm gonna do that half. Yeah, you know, I was trying to, you know, save some time, but yep, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue half down at a time. This is my paper choice for this metal tray. And yep, you can see all that. Nope, I was not worried about it because I knew that I, as long as I got it flat, I didn't have to worry about it causing any problems with the paint that I had, that I got the chippiness off, that I was going to be laying some type of a paper over it too. Just a great way to save these beautiful trays. But unlike the square trays, I can't set that paper in and do a fingernail line because, yeah, there's way too many curves on this one. So my thought was, okay, flip it upside down, kind of have it centered where the wording is, and then go ahead and trace it around upside down like this. So hopefully it works. Okay, even though it did not completely fit and I had to push it back in, I at least the paper was able to fit into the tray where I could do a thumbnail mark on it. So I did have to take another inch or so off. I'm not sure why I didn't hit the camera when I was doing that. Who, who knows? But same thing, I'm going to go ahead and get these edges distressed. For my last tray, I just didn't have any of that paper that I liked inside of it. So I asked Chris, could you just cut a piece of board? So this is just those big sheets of plywood you can get. I believe this is a maple piece. Yes, yeah, so we just always have a couple other trays that we've been doing rounds on and just staining them and they've been selling real well so i'm like okay let's just cut a square piece for this still kind of looking like that industrial feel just not with any wording it's funny here as i'm editing this i'm thinking well chris must have watched how i cut the paper down how i got the one side to fit in first and then measured for that second side that's how he cuts down his wood too i guess it works for wood i guess it works for paper it's a way to, to get it done I'm, nope, I'm not going to put any wording on this. Maybe somebody just wants something plain. So I'm going to use my watered down antiquing wax only because these pieces of plywood, when you buy them, they are dry and they just suck <laughs> stain right in. So my watered down version is I got that little um, jar that was a pickle jar. I put about a quarter cup, a little less of the antiquing wax in with a full thing of water and then I take a spoonful of a plastic spoonful of the ink chalk paint Waverly and that's my mixture so I get a little bit more of a aged barn wood look just takes a little bit of that red off now if I'm doing this mixture and I don't like that color I can add a little bit more of just the straight antiquing wax to it it all depends on what kind of wood you're staining on, but I love seeing the grain. I love this little aged color. I definitely think it's going with that industrial vibe that I'm going for. It really doesn't take too long for that stain to dry on this wood. And then I'm going to go in with a three coat, dry, let them dry in between, and then I'll sand that final coat of polycrylic spray. I want to make sure that this is good and sealed. I'm going to go in and distress all the sharp edges using a 220 sandpaper. I just absolutely think this is going to tie everything in together, getting those sharp edges just distressed, and then sanding the shiny 
of the just the straight black the flat areas and if it just heavily distresses in any area i do not care i want it to look like it's aged and used and industrial that I have this all sanded and distressed and blown off with the air compressor. I'm going in with some straight Waverly antiquing wax and what now I have caused to be dry and lifeless is going to have just a amazing rich tone to it. Black paint, Waverly brown wax, oh my goodness. Like I said earlier, I just take some steel wool. I'm just sanding it to be smooth. Sanding when you spray or even just put a little bit of the top coat on, there's always a little bit of a texture. So I just wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth. For one more level of added protection, a little bit of the Verithane finishing wax in the natural. This is just a wipe on, a wipe off. I never know if you're just going to be using one of our trays for a decor, or maybe you're going to put a plant, or maybe you're going to serve drinks on it. So I definitely want to make sure that I get it sealed in so water doesn't cause any problems. I'm going to be gluing this down. I'm using the E6000, just putting the unit four, on your four corners in the middle. And then as it's setting off to the side, I use whatever fullest can of paint I have to use as a weight to make sure that they are pressed down and it is attaching. I don't just trust that my glue and my board and the tray are all going to just match. So now that my poly and my paper is dry, this is my next step. Yep, I take a little bit of that black onyx paint. I take a stencil brush. And yes, I want to make it look like it has been worn off. It has been aged off. So just doing this little technique, blending that paint, that's why it's important for me anyway to distress those edges just a little bit, that it's looking more worn than it is that I just painted over it. I'm going to go ahead and do this to all of the trays. That's just going to give, give them that aged look. Then after the black onyx has dried on all the trays, I go back in just like that first tray and I'm going to distress all my edges, any sharp corners with some 220 sandpaper. I'm going to just, it's, it's a look that I love. So, yep, and then I will go through those flat edges also and take off that shiny. Yes, if you guessed it, yep. <laughs> I'm going to go in and, yep, use some of that antiquing wax on these two. So all of them are going to get antiquing wax. That's just going to what I caused by sanding to open it up. Um, that's why I sand the flat edges is that it helps the wax be accepted into the paint and just increases that richness. And then where I've sanded it, it just soaks in that wax and just pops that underneath wood. My next step to tie all this together is taking some of that antiquing wax. Do you see what I'm doing? So where I painted that black, I'm kind of fading, blending the brown over it just as it's gradually going into the paper. Not dark over the entire paper, but just fading it into it. And though I just take my rag, I'm not pushing hard. That's why I don't mind wrinkles. I like some of that antiquing wax to grab anything that might have crinkled on the paper.
And after letting that antiquing wax dry, I go back in with a couple coats of the polycrylic spray. I do not sand the top of the paper though. Okay, what did you all think? Oh my gosh, I just, I, yep, a little bit, uh, kind of like those furniture pieces where they're having a little bit more of an industrial vibe. Yes, I, the, that paper fit in them wonderfully. They are large. Yes, you still got the wording. They just kind of look like you tore apart old shipping containers, old crates to make these. Absolutely love it. Yep, I ran out of some paper, so we had to do Luckily, Chris could uh, cut me a piece of wood to kind of keep with the theme of what I was going for, just to keep it cost efficient. And then that one lap tray, oh my gosh, all that beautiful detail work. I'm just like, oh, I want to be able to save this. But I knew that that MDF board underneath was raised and the more you add to it, the more it raises up. So it'd be able to cover that up, save this piece and put that paper on top of it yes thank you thank you so much and then that big metal tray when i purchased it it wasn't chippy at all somehow on the way home it started vibrating off and all of a sudden i had big chips and i'm like oh so then that, that was a hot mess so yeah i hope i shared shared with you today and have inspired you to look at thrift store finds and even though things are damaged how we can still save them from the landfill. Yes, we can cover them up, we can cover them up with paper, we can cover them up with wood, because unfortunately sometimes paint is just isn't enough. So thanks for watching today's video guys, and don't forget to give me a quick comment of what your favorite one and if I have inspired you in any way. And then also a thumbs up if you like this kind of content so YouTube knows that you like what you saw and they'll keep recommending our channel. And if you are new and checking out our channel for the first time and you liked it, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to thanks bye